Okay. We just got this in with some breaking news. The second group of hostages that we were just talking about, we understand that is happening. Let's go to David Noriega, who is in Israel at the moment. David, uh, what do we know? We just got in the last few minutes, Hamas is saying on one of its official telegram channels that it has handed those hostages over to the Red Cross. Additionally, an IDF spokesperson has told NBC News that they have heard from the Red Cross that the hostages are now in their custody and are on their way to the Rafah crossing in the Gaza Strip. So, Richard, what this means is that this process we've been waiting for appears to be underway. Uh, it's a matter of how long it takes them to get to the Rafah crossing before we actually start seeing those images. Right. And, and earlier watching, we've been keeping this video up on the left hand side, David, as you know, because we saw yet more supply trucks moving th through uh, going north. And at this point, you're saying as we sh very shortly will see the 13 Israelis and seven other nationalities make it through this very point if it follows the same progress as of yesterday. And one of the questions here, David, is whether the Americans would be part of this group or not. And what we're hearing is that they will not be. But what might we expect to see at this location based on what we saw yesterday? Based on what we saw yesterday, we won't know the actual identities, the names, et cetera, of the hostages until they are out. Uh, we do know that the IDF has those identities. They have been in contact with the families. This is required in order to, to set up the reunification of the hostages with their loved ones. But that information doesn't actually become public and accessible to us until the release officially happens. We learn this information minute by minute as it happens. Uh, on the Palestinian prisoner side, we do have the identities of those prisoners. There's an organization that represents prisoners and their families in the West Bank. Uh, we, we have the names. It's really just a matter of having, you know, actually seeing those Red Cross buses enter the streets of Ramallah and, uh, and uh, release those prisoners to their homes. The mechanics that will happen before we see the buses coming through this particular border crossing with the Hamas hostages, what, what do we know about that process? You've been reporting on what's happening uh, in terms of the release of the Palestinian uh, prisoners. What is happening now before we actually see them cross this particular border crossing? What in Rafa, you mean? Yeah. So so what happens is basically yes, the Red Cross is the go between between Hamas and the right. So the, the Red Cross is the go between between uh, Hamas and the IDF. Hamas hands the hostages to the Red Cross. The Red Cross crosses the border with them, hands them to the IDF. The IDF has an operational command center on the Egypt side. Yesterday, it involved uh, helicopters that flew the hostages into Israeli territory to get medical treatment. It's during that time that we begin to actually see who these hostages are. We begin to learn who their families are. Importantly, Richard, as I say, we also begin to learn who's missing, right? Who was left yeah. behind. Mm -hmm. uh, these aren't, com yeah. When I was uh, in Tel Aviv earlier this week, I was speaking to multiple families of Israeli hostages who are fairly certain that their loved ones are not going to be released because, for example, they're adult males. But even that doesn't tell you the whole story. There, there will be, even after today, there will be yeah. more children left behind, more women left behind. Um, you know, th these families are in a, a, an agonizing state of suspension. Yeah. A few of them get some degree of relief, but not even necessarily complete relief because they don't necessarily get every member of their family that they're waiting for. It, it's very piecemeal. Uh, the process isn't over until it's over. And mm. we really only learn things as we see them happen. As they are happening, David Noriega, you're, you're looking into my mind. Uh, we just heard from the IDF that the International Red Cross has the day two hostages. So the Red Cross does have the hostages for day two. The enumerated 13 Israelis, seven other nationalities, not part of the agreement, but also being released uh, as of now, this is according to the Red Cross and the Red Cross telling the IDF they are making their way to this crossing that we see on the left hand side of your screen. And, you know, David is interesting because as we were following the delay and then you were announcing that the delay was no longer, well, I should say the holdup was no longer there. They had fixed the situation, right? That was the announcement through the Qataris uh, as well as what we we're hearing from Hamas. But what happened after that is that there were further supply trucks making it through this crossing. Could have it been that 
give us those remaining trucks and then we'll finally let these particular hostages go, which we're just getting the news on? It's entirely possible. We didn't get a detailed response from the IDF about the, the specific allegations that Hamas made regarding what they claimed was Israel failing to meet its end of the deal. So that's something that I think probably we'll never know for sure. I should also say that one of the questions about the aid trucks is not just whether they enter Gaza, but also how they're distributed within the Gaza Strip. One of the big sticking points here is how many of those trucks are allowed to go from southern Gaza into northern Gaza. Mm -hmm. That's where some of the humanitarian aid is most desperately needed, right? That's where the military action has been concentrated. We know that more than a million people were displaced from northern into southern Gaza, but we also know that there are still some four to 500,000 people left in the north. That's where the, the worst of the devastation has happened. Those people desperately need that aid. It could be life-saving for them. The Palestinian Red Crescent has said that even the amount of aid that they expect to, rele to, to receive is woefully insufficient. But if you're one of those families, one of those people mm -hmm. who is receiving some of that aid, again, it could make the difference between life and death. So it's not just whether the aid trucks enter Gaza. It's also what happens after and, right. and how far they can make it into Gaza and how it's distributed. And given the bombardment, not an easy task. Uh, if you're just joining us into MSNBC, we are just learning this hour that indeed the second group of hostages from Hamas have been released. We have also learned, according to the IDF, that the International Red Cross has received this second group of hostages for day two. And so now what we await is on the left-hand side to see them actually cross that border. That signal comes and goes, but we're carrying it live for you so that you can also see when this does happen. The other side of the equation is that the 39 Palestinian prisoners and that they being released in the West Bank. So those are the two parts at this quarter hour that we understand just into us at MSNBC, again, is that 13 Israelis, seven foreigners now making their way with the Red Cross to the Rafa border crossing.